Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In today's video, we will have a look at digital file signatures and how these help you to protect you against malware and attackers when you download software. I structured this video into four different parts. In the first part, we will have a look at an introduction to digital signatures. Then we will have a look at creation of file signatures. After that, we will see how verification of file signatures work. And finally, we will have a look at digital signed executables in Windows. A digital signature system is a crypto system where a sender uses a private key to compute a unique value, the signature, for any digital message. And the signature then can be verified by the receiver. And for example, the RSA crypto system can be used for that. To know how the RSA crypto system works, have a look at my video about RSA on this channel. With such a crypto system, every sender has a private key D, which is only known to him, and a public key E, which is known to everyone. Then, when the sender wants to sign a message, he uses his private key D, and the receiver then can use a public key to verify the signature. How does signing work? Signing a message M works as follows. First, the sender computes a hash value using a cryptographic hash function, and he computes H, which is the hash of the message M. Then, the sender computes the digital signature S using his signature algorithm, for instance RSA. He computes the signature of the hash H using his private key D. Then the sender adds the signature S to the message M and creates a tuple M and S. Then finally, the sender sends the signed message M and S to the receiver. Now on the receiver side, the receiver can verify the signed message MS as follows. First, clearly the receiver receives the signed message. Then the sender decrypts the hash value to verify the signature. He computes H, which is equal to the verify function. In case of RSA, this is just decryption. And he decrypts the received S using the public key of the sender E. Then the receiver computes a hash value H dash, which is the hash of the received message. Then the receiver compares the received H and the computed H dash. And if H and H dash are equal, the signature is valid. Now let's have a look at creation of file signatures. First of all, a file signature is a digital signature of a file, computed in the way we have just seen. And the purpose of signing files are, first, Data integrity, that means you can detect file manipulation by an attacker and of course introduced by errors. Then authenticity, you can verify the identity of the creator of a file. Then trust and security, that means you gain knowledge that a file is from a trustworthy sender. And finally, protection against malware, Files with invalid signatures can be seen as suspicious. They could also be altered with malware. So when you receive an invalid signature, you should be very careful. Only having a possibility to create signatures does not automatically build trust. How do we know that the public key of a sender is actually his or her public key? And this is a problem and the solution of the problem of this trust problem are the so-called trust anchors. A trust anchor in cryptography is a known verified entity used as a reference point for validating digital signatures or certificates. We will see what a certificate is later. And for example, browsers and operating systems have so-called root certificates as trust anchors stored inside their storage, and they can use these root certificates as trust anchors. What is a certificate in cryptography? 
A certificate is an electronic document used to prove the ownership of a public key. For example, an X509 certificate. This is our standard for certificates. And the certificate itself is signed with the private key of a trusted certification authority or CA. And if we now trust the root certificate of the CA, that means we trust the CA. And for instance, Alice certificate that we received is also signed by the CA that we trust. We believe that Alice provided certificate is in fact from Alice. And here's an example how this works. On the top, you have the root certificate by a CA, and then Alice created her own certificate. She sent her certificate to the CA, and when she did this, she also used some kind of identification so that she can prove that she is Alice. Then the CA signed Alice certificate using the root certificate that the CA has. And we know the root certificate, and when we receive Alice certificate, since it is signed by the private key of the CA, we can just check using the root certificate if that signature is valid. And same works for Bob's certificate, for Charlie's certificate, for Dave's certificate, and so on. Now let's have a look at signatures of executables in Windows. Developers who release software can sign their executables. To do so, they need a so-called software signing certificate. And for instance, big companies like Commodore offer such certificates for money. By the way, when a software is signed using such a certificate, doesn't mean that the software is good. It just means that the one who created the software is the one who actually created the software since he signed the software. So a signed software doesn't stand for quality software. Okay, let's go back. The root certificates from these companies are stored in the Windows certificate storage. And every n month, a certificate expires and needs to be renewed. For example, in the Crypto project, we also have such a software signing certificate, and we have to renew this also uh, every n month. And how does this signing of software now works? Let's have a look at how we sign cryptool.exe, for instance. We have here the exe file, and we have our software signing certificate, and of course, we also have our private key. And we put the private key and the software signing certificate, these are stored in a so-called P12 file, we put this into a signature creation software. In Windows, this is, for instance, so-called sign tool. Also, cryptool.exe is given to the signature creation tool. And this tool now generates our digital signature and appends it to cryptool.exe. Besides the signature, it also puts our certificate, this certificate is public, also into the exe file, certificates between the root certificate and our software signing certificate. So this tree here, there can be also different sub certificate so you don't your your certificate needs not to be signed by the root certificate you can have a second certificate in between and then Alice certificate so you can have a chain of certificates and also parts of this chain can be put into that signature that is then appended to cryptool.exe now how does verification of file signatures or digital signatures work on a windows machine for instance, we downloaded an executable from the internet. What happens now? So we have the file on our PC. We double click on the exe file to start it, for example, to install Crypto 2 using the installer. Now we have a valid signature. Then this dialog here pops up. And since this dialog is also protected by the operating system, so I could not make a screenshot, I had to take a photo. So sorry for the blurry view of that image here. And when you have a valid signature, the operating system asks, asks you, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? This was on Windows 10. And this here is the Cryptool installer. And then you can see when you have a valid signature that we have a verified publisher. In our case, it's the Universität der Bundeswehr München, the University of uh, Munich. Since the University of Munich, the uh, Bundeswehr University of Munich, 
provides a software signing certificate for the Crypto project. And since this is a valid signature, we just press yes, and then we can install the application. What happens when we have an invalid signature? For instance, you downloaded a file that has a broken signature. In that case, Windows protects you. Here you can see in this dialog, I could make a screenshot. Windows protected your PC. Microsoft Defender Smart Screen prevented an unrecognized app from starting. Running this app might put your PC at risk. So when you download, for instance, the crypto setup and you see this here, then you shouldn't install it because maybe the exe file was altered while you downloaded it or you already have malware on your PC. So you should check your PC when you see that and you should check why the file could be invalid or the signature could be invalid. Also, when you have a valid signature, you can pre uh, click here on details. This is very hard to see here. And then you get another window, another pop-up here. You, you can see here that you can show information about the publisher certificate, charge when these notifications appear or change. I cannot read this very well here. But when you click on this then, you get another window here. And here you can have a look at the details of the certificate. For instance, this certificate is intended for the following purposes. Ensure software came from software publisher. So this certificate ensures that Crypto2 comes from us. And then it protects the software from alteration after publication. And this is issued, as I already said, to the University of the Bundeswehr in Munich. It is issued by Certum Code Signing 2021 CA. This is the CA. And the certificate is valid from the 28th of September 2022 to the 27th of September 2025. So latest at that point, we need a new software signing certificate in the Crypto project. Now that we know what digital signatures are and how they are created and how you can check these, let's have a look at the Crypto2 setup that I downloaded from the Crypto website and its digital signature. I'm here now on the desktop on my, of my recording PC and I downloaded yesterday two files here. The one file here is the signed Crypto2 setup and the other file here I manipulated, so I only changed one byte of the file. So we have a destroyed signature. Let's have a look at the signed setup exe file. So we go into the properties here. And when you have a digital signature in this file, so the file is, uh, is signed, then we have this digital signatures tab here. And when you click on this digital signatures tab, you can see a signature list. You can see the name of Sina, as I said, University of the Bundeswehr Munich. You can see the digest algorithm, the, the hash algorithm, which is SHA1. And you can click on this, and then you can click on details. And when you click on details, you get a, an additional window. You can see the name, the email, and the signing time, the email of the owner of the certificate. And you can have a look at the advanced tag. And here you can see different interesting things like the digest algorithm was SHA-1, the digest encryption algorithm, so the algorithm for create, creating the signature was RSA, and we have a lot of additional attributes specifically for software signing here. Yeah, and as I said, this here has a valid digital signature, so it doesn't tell you or doesn't show you any error here, but let's have a look at the destroyed setup.exe. We also go to properties. And then again, it sees we have a digital signature. Keep in mind, I only changed one byte, but malware, of course, could change a lot of more. And even malware could remove the di digital signatures. So the tab here is missing. Let's have a look at digital signatures. And when you press uh, select again the signer here and press details, the digital signature information, the integrity of the certificate that signed this file cannot be guaranteed. The certificate may be corrupted or maybe ha may have been altered. So in this case, when you see this here, you have a problem. You shouldn't <laughs> start such an XC file and you shouldn't install software that is that has a broken signature. And again here, this um, is really bad. And 
Windows will protect you from that. So as I have shown you in, in the slides, when you double click the sign setup here, I cannot do this now because the dialog pops up over what I can record. But when you click the sign setup, it works without any problem. And when you click signal, oh, let, let's just do it and let's see what happens. So I have now a dialog you cannot see. I click yes, I want to install and then the setup comes. But with the destroyed setup, let's see what happens. So Windows should protect, ah yeah, this is, this is good. Windows protects you, that's the same what you've seen on the slides. So in case you really want to run such a program, but you should never do this with a broken signature uh, in, a, on a, in a software that you downloaded, you can click here on more info and then run anyway. Sometimes you want to run such software, but only if you're 110% sure that this software is has, has no malware and it's not a problem to use it. You shouldn't run this. And if Crypto 2, when you download the setup, shows you that here, you should first of all check your PC and also um, contact us because we once had a problem that the signature algorithm or the signature on the server didn't run for a few days and then our software was not signed. And luckily there was a user already after a few hours telling us that and we could fix it. This was just small problem in the build process, but then you can see that signatures um, didn't work and so you shouldn't install it. Yeah, and this is everything I wanted to show you in this video. You know, you now know what digital file signatures are, how they are created, what certificates are, what, CA, what a CA is for such certificates. And we also had a look at two different files, a signed file and a signed a signature destroyed file or a file where the signature was destroyed. Yeah, as I said, this was everything I wanted to show you in this short video. I hope you like it. If yes, please give a thumbs up. Also, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, please do so. This really helps us to grow the channel and also to make Crypto 2 more popular. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next time.